Hello again, I'm Matt, back again with this 99 Chevy Blazer where in a previous video I found there was a short circuit in one of the injectors in the Spider injection system. And somewhat serendipitously during that video I also discovered that there is a low fuel pressure in this vehicle. The vehicle has pretty bad hesitation, it certainly doesn't seem to have a lot of pickup and originally of course thought that was entirely due to the misfire caused by the failed injector but now I'm thinking that uh, this fuel system needs a little closer look so that's what we're going to do today. I did find that there is uh, 35 psi of fuel pressure. It runs around 40 when the car is running. The specs uh, from what I've seen, I really need to get a manual for this thing I guess, but the specs from what I've seen should be much higher, you know, about 55 to 60. Um, so does seem to be maybe a fuel pump issue, but again, True to my philosophy, I'm not just going to go and change a fuel pump and then find out that wasn't the problem. I'm going to do a systematic diagnosis here and rule out exactly what the problem is that is causing the problems with this car. So the other thing, of course, uh, it is freezing cold outside. It is about zero degrees Kelvin right now. So I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the floor digging out a fuel tank from this car. I, I assume you have to drop the fuel tank. It, it is a Chevy and I haven't seen a Chevy yet where you don't have to do that. But if it does come down to that, um, so be it. But my goal for this video, I want to eliminate every possibility that it is indeed the fuel pump so I can do as minimal work on, as possible and be as safe as possible. I'm just a home mechanic. I do not really have the facilities to safely drop a fuel tank. Hopefully this car is already almost out of gas if that happens too. So let's see what we find. So obviously it does sound like we're leaning towards a fuel pump problem. Ha! Leaning! Get it? But uh, what I always like to do is before jumping to something without conclusive evidence on what the problem is, I want to get as much data as possible and I'm going to use my auto tap scan tool like we used in the first video again to get some more data. Um, a lot of the newer scanners out there, just the simple ones like the Actron scanners from AutoZone, I understand are capable of doing like Live O2 data and uh, even fuel trim data which we're going to look at here and this can be hugely helpful. So um, if you do have that capability and you've never looked at this data because you have no idea what these things mean, then uh, hang in there for the next 10 minutes or so because this is going to be very, very, very helpful. And if not, then you can you know, kind of fast forward on the video 10 minutes or so and we'll get right to like some more basic uh, traditional type of testing. But anyway, um, this is not data from the Blazer here. This I just wanted to show as an example before we do the Blazer data because I want to minimize the time I'm running the engine because um, it's freaking cold outside and I have to have the garage door open. But um, this is from a previous car from a couple weeks ago. I, I think it was a Toyota. And it has this uh, 0171 DTC. It's a lean condition. And basically, uh, we were able to fix this using the data that's shown in this and another screen that I'll show here real quick. So um, let's cover from here real quick. The CL1 means closed loop. Most of you guys know that means that the engine is warmed up. Uh, this is opposed to open loop where that means the engine is not warmed up and the car is basically using some you know preset data to kind of get by but once it's warmed up then it actually uses the O2 sensors and all the other sensors to adjust the conditions in the engine and this car is in closed loop that's where you want to be when you look at your scan tool data in most situations and the next thing we're going to jump to is the big one here, the fuel trim, because I love fuel trims. These are so helpful when you understand them. And we see we've got uh, bank one and bank two here. Each has its own short and long-term fuel trim. So this must be a V engine, obviously. It's got two banks. Um, bank one will always be the bank with the number one cylinder on it. So what we can tell here, because fuel trims well, at least the way that I look at it is these numbers are a indication of the deviation from normal that the computer has to make with the fuel to keep the engine running properly. These numbers here are all positive, so the computer is adding fuel to the engine. And actually, I should restate that. 
uh, the computer is not adding fuel. The computer is calling for the addition of fuel. In other words, this is a lean condition that the computer has detected, and it is adding fuel to compensate for whatever the extra unmetered error is here. So that's very important denotation because the computer is calling for fuel. That doesn't mean the fuel is getting there. Maybe the pump can't keep up with it. Maybe there's a clogged injector or something. But the positive numbers indicate a lean condition. Obviously, the opposite would be as if, if these are negative numbers, that indicates a rich condition. The computer is going to call for less fuel, and it will do this by adjusting the injector pulse length. So if we look specifically here, um, a, a kind of a red flag on the long-term fuel trim, which is really kind of more where I focus, anything over 10% is generally an indication that you might have something wrong. Anything between negative 5 and 5%, I'm not even worried about. That's totally normal. 24% is pretty high, and we see it's happening on both banks. So in this car, there is some condition that is causing a lean situation in the entire engine in both banks. It's not affecting just one bank. So this could be um, vacuum leak. I don't think it is a vacuum leak because there's some other information down here that I'll explain later that indicates it's not. But it is something affecting the entire engine. Certainly a fuel delivery problem would affect the entire engine. Now the short term and long term trim is a little bit more confusing. The short term trim is an immediate reaction to a situation, either the gas pedal pressed or some abnormal condition. Uh, let's say, for example, that you were to pull a vacuum line from the engine. Well, that is going to create a lean condition. And immediately, you will see the short-term trim on both banks because a vacuum leak uh, will affect both cylinders, unless you can find some way of creating a leak in just one cylinder. That will cause the short-term fuel trim to increase. Now, the short-term fuel trim is going to keep on increasing and increasing until it meets the new fuel demand to keep a 14.7 to 1 ratio of air to fuel. The more air in the engine, the more fuel that has to be there. It always has to be at 14.7 to 1. So at some point, this is going to stabilize. Now, when it stabilizes, that's going to be kind of sort of a new standard, a new zero point. And that point is memorized by the long term. So once that point stabilizes, the long term trim sets so it keeps that additional fuel over what normally would be there. And the short term trims no longer need to keep adding fuel, so they'll start dropping back to zero. But the long term trim will stay at that new zero point until the condition is fixed. And that is a very important part to, to notice because now we can look at the long-term trim and tell whether a car is running lean or rich in general. So now that you've got that knowledge down, let's go ahead and apply this in the next screen and show why we had this problem in that previous car. And this is all going to be very similar to what I believe we'll see in this Blazer. So if you understand this much, you'll be able to look at the real-time data with the Blazer and come up with your own conclusions on what is happening you are hanging in with me here, let's go ahead and make a diagnosis on this particular vehicle based on what we've just learned about fuel trims. So in this top graph here, the red line is what we're interested in. The green line is mass airflow, and don't worry about that right now. It's the red line here. This is throttle position sensor. This represents every time the driver is hitting the accelerator pedal in the vehicle, like right over here, he's flooring it, all right? And on the bottom of the graph is our bank one and bank two long-term fuel trims. We're not worried about short-term fuel trims in this particular application right now. So look at that and see if you can see a pattern that might help us make a diagnosis. And I know that I see that every time the guy is hitting the accelerator pedal, there is a screaming response from the computer to call for fuel. So every time he hits the accelerator pedal, it's creating a very extreme lean condition. We can tell that because look at the numbers here. Um, it looks like it's maxing out maybe at around 45 or so. So again, anything over 10 is a little bit of a concern. Probably anything around 20 or 24 is going to throw a code. And here we are around 40. So this appears to be a fuel delivery problem. 
every time he's hitting the accelerator pedal, it looks like not enough fuel is being delivered, so the computer keeps screaming for fuel. Now, the only thing is in this particular vehicle, what if I told you that the fuel pressure was absolutely normal? No problem with the fuel pump delivery and things like that. So now you can start thinking things like uh, clogged injectors. Now remember, you have to have one clogged injector on each bank because both of these are reading the same. Um, it's not a vacuum leak. We know that because a vacuum leak is not going to be likely when you're hitting the accelerator pedal because you're opening the throttle plate and essentially you're making sort of a vacuum leak in, in a way. A vacuum leak would be more likely is if during idle conditions when the foot is off the accelerator pedal that we would see an increase in fuel trim. We do not see that, so it's only when the accelerator, accelerator pedal is being used that we see this extreme fuel trim increase. So that basically rules out a vacuum leak. So what would be left? Well, it turns out that in this car, it is a dirty mass airflow sensor. It's one of the reasons I was getting the, the green mass airflow data here. Mass airflow sensor is located after the air filter and before the throttle body. It basically measures the amount of air coming into the engine. So that amount is known by the computer. It's metered air. If the mass airflow sensor is dirty, then far more air is coming to the engine than what is being measured. And of course, the computer is then going to have a very hard time because there's a huge amount of unmetered air coming in. So that was actually the problem in this particular vehicle. Now, one of the questions is, Maybe it's a mass airflow problem on the Blazer if we see something like this. Uh, how do we know it's not a mass airflow sensor on the Blazer causing the drivability problems? Well, there could be a, a dirty mass airflow sensor on the Blazer, but the Blazer also, we know, has very low fuel pressure. So if the mass airflow sensor is dirty, then there is that and a fuel pressure problem as well. So that's why we're, again, sort of leaning towards the, the fuel delivery issue here. So uh, let's go ahead and give you a real quick quiz here, and then we'll know you're an expert on fuel trims, and you can help diagnose when we hook this up real time to the blazer. What would happen to the fuel trim if we were to put propane in the intake? Think about that. And if you said that the fuel trim would decrease, you are correct. If we put propane into the intake, that is going to create a rich condition, and the pre-cat oxygen sensors will detect this richer condition, not because it's detecting protein. Remember, they're oxygen sensors. They detect oxygen, not propane, not fuel. But what will happen is they will notice, because the propane is now displacing some of the oxygen that was there, the Pre-cat oxygen sensors will notice there is suddenly a decrease in the amount of oxygen. It will interpret this as a rich condition. And because there is less oxygen, less fuel will be needed. So it is going to draw back the demand for fuel, and the fuel trims will go negative. So now that you are an expert in all this, think about what's going to happen when we hook up this scan tool to the blazer. Think what's going to happen when I give it throttle and we'll see if your hypothesis is correct.